everyone and welcome back to Stretford Paddock. We are here for Edgar and Kelly United. I am joined by my co-host Angelina. How are you? I'm all good, thank you. How are you? I'm not bad. It's just one of those days. <laughs> uh, so obviously we are here for three hot topics, Q&A, um, an interview of a guest and our in defence. Um, we will kick this off with our hot topic. First one being... There's lots of rumours surrounding Bell at the moment um, of him coming to Manchester United. Um, I just want to get to know your thoughts on that, Angelina, and your thoughts on a striker that you would like at the club. I mean, the, the whole Gareth Bale thing is very interesting because it had a, a lot of attention for a while and then it died a very strange death. I mean, he's... He's what, he's 31, he's contracted until I think about 2022 with Real Madrid. He's, I think the new contract he signed, I'm sure I read somewhere that he's getting like 14 million euros after tax or something a year. Like it's crazy money. Um, but you can just see it hasn't worked out. I mean, you could argue really, I think it didn't really work out on the whole. I think the star that he was projected to be did he really live up to that? Could you argue, you know, it was because of players like, you know, Ronaldo and stuff had been in the shadow of other players. But I think if you were a star player, you should still be able to, you know, shine bright with other stars, I guess. So I was always a little bit disappointed with how things went. I know, you know, we did score some fantastic goals um, for Real Madrid and he had a couple of seasons where he was decent. But I can see why they want rid. They need to get rid of some dead wood. Um, and that is Gareth Bale, unfortunately. I mean, he wants out as well. I mean, I think he, he came out after um, playing for Wales and said, like, oh, there was a deal on the table, but they put a block on it and it's this and that. I mean, he wasn't even in the squad for some of the final games with Real Madrid. So him and Zidane clearly are not vibing. Um, so, yeah, regarding him leaving Real Madrid, I mean, I think they should have done it last season, to be honest. He should have done it last season. Um Manchester United, I don't really see it. I mean, according to, I think, Mundo Deportivo, they've said that Real are willing to sell him for, like, about 22 million, I've read. I don't know if that's true, but that is apparently, which is probably similar to what they've sold um, James Rodriguez for to Everton. Um, I think, might be wrong. But, yeah, so I just... To drop the price, they are desperate to get rid. I mean, on paper, you could say, you know what? Not a bad price for somebody who, maybe not necessarily always a striker, but somebody who can also be on the wing, who will bag you some goals. But will he bag you some goals? That's the thing now, not necessarily. So I think for United, I think that ship has sailed. I think he's past it. He gets injured too much. I think he, li I think he likes around a golf more than he does anything else. Could I see him maybe going to the Chinese league for the money side of it? Maybe. I personally see him going to the MLS, I think. I could see him maybe going there. Um, like I say, good weather for golf. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think I, that Bale would have been a good option? Do you know what? For me personally, I wouldn't take him. I really don't want him at Manchester United. But I have seen a lot of fans saying, do you know what? If we don't get Sancho have him on loan for a year. I mean, like, I see where everyone's coming from as, like, a stopgap, but for me, I just don't want Gareth Bell at Manchester United. Full stop. No. I mean, you look at strikers, and, I mean, in, in a perfect world, um, you know, there are so many names that you could have. I mean, obviously, Lewandowski is a massive name. You know, even though he's, like, 32, he's scored like 55 goals or something like that this season absolutely crazy and like 40 odd appearances um he'd be an amazing player but I think for United again it's somebody who's the wrong side of 30 in my opinion I mean personally I'd love you know obviously I think everyone would love Mbappe I think he's young he's fast he's creative he does share the ball. He's not too selfish. But it seems like Real Madrid will probably be his next stop. Maybe one day he might want um, a bit of time in the Premier League. I think for me, the player that I would really like is Dembele for, um, from Lyon. 
He scored two goals against City uh, in the Champions League. I think he's amazing. He's 24, I think. Not as many goals. I think he, he got... Is he, yeah, he's 24 and he got 24 goals this season. Um, obviously not the same numbers as, as some other strikers, but I think at 24, he's at a great age where he could grow, uh, get better, score more goals, develop. So he would be my player that I would want. But then you can also argue, do we need one because of Martial? But I think with Martial, he's not a safe bet sometimes. I love Martial and I love how well he's been playing recently absolutely fantastic exactly what I want to see but is he going to be consistent so I can understand why people would want a striker but you know Martial's young as well so maybe I guess me saying we don't need an older striker maybe because Martial is young we could get an older striker in who knows but that that's what I think I mean that would be the the dream would be Mbappe but let's be honest dream for, for me do you know what country. I wouldn't go for a big name striker Mm. I would go for someone like Jimenez from Wolves. He yeah, people might laugh at that, but he is something different to what we have. And mm. because we've got such a fluent like attacking where Martial can go out wide, Jimenez can play the number nine role. I think he would be good squad depth for for us. And you know what? He's an underrated player as well and I don't oh, know yeah, why because he's quality he's an absolutely amazing player he's strong he's reliable his hold up play is amazing so I would definitely have him I just think we won't get him because Wolves will put the price up yeah and I, and I think as well I mean it depends what happens this season with Wolves and with United but Wolves I know that, you know, their owner is very much happy to give them money. I think the owner's pretty much been saying to them, if you hit A, B, C and D, you know, the cash flow will get bigger and they've been hitting these points and hitting these targets and getting better. Um, so, you know, they're challenging in the top six. Who's to say that they couldn't, who knows what could happen this season? Anything could happen. They could even be challenging alongside us. Who knows? So, you know, is there that, attraction to come to Manchester United if you're part of something with Wolves like part of this plan to become you know a great club who knows but I, I, I think I do like him and as well he's also he's experienced in the Premier League isn't he so you've already got that um that ticked off that it's not somebody where people are going to question oh can he hack it in the Premier League because he's already done it um but yeah our second hot topic that I wanted to discuss because I do understand it and I don't understand it, is this left-back scenario. So obviously we chatted last week, it came up on the podcast about Regulon, sorry if I've said his name wrong, whatever, um, and that, you know, Real Madrid, obviously he's playing um, at Sevilla, but he's a Real Madrid player. Real Madrid have basically got that area of the pitch covered. Um that they're pretty much, you know, offering him to United. And obviously, Alex Tellers, again, if I said his name wrong, there's another name here I'm going to have to look and read it. So Vitaly Mikolenko, who plays for Dynamo Kiev as well. These names are all in the mix. Do we need a left-back? Is Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams enough? Right. There's mixed views on this, isn't there? For me... A left back right now isn't a priority. You know, a centre back for me is a massive priority. But yeah. if he's offered to us, then we'd be stupid to not take um, a left back like Regulon. Is that his? I don't know how you say his name, and I apologise. But if he, if he's offered to us, then I would definitely take him. I do see why Oli is focusing on a left back though, because when Shaw got injured, our left side was very, very vulnerable. So yeah. I think maybe Oli is focusing so we don't make the same mistakes this season and he just mm. wants to focus on that, get a left back and get get it sorted. For me, um, regular, regular, I don't know how you say his name, regular. <laughs> um, for me, yeah. out, out of him and Tellez, I would take him um, for sure. They're both quality players, but 
Regulon is a more rounded... He's a bit younger as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's just a more rounded left back. You know, he's very good at attacking. Um, it's just the Real Madrid want like a, a, a buyback clause or something. You know, 25 million to 30 million would be great if we didn't have the buyback clause because that's just that's just basically a long-term loan. And I don't mm. see Manchester United being interested in that for, we yeah. could have him for a few years and Real Madrid be like, oh, he's looking really good. Do you know what? I want him back. I yeah. don't think we'd be interested in that. If he goes for 25 to 30 million with no buyback clause, then I'll snatch a hand off. Take him. Yeah. I mean, I, I think for me, I, I was looking at this and I wasn't, I agree with you in that I don't think it's a priority. I mean, maybe in a season or two, maybe next season, if Brandon Williams um, maybe doesn't perform that well or Luke Shaw has a bit of a mare, maybe then we'll need to start looking. But it was never, it never really came into my head as something to worry about. I always thought that between the two of them, they kind of had it covered. Um, we'll just read out some of these stats that I've seen. They are pretty similar. Um, I mean, you look in the Premier League, um, the tackle success rate, Williams is 71%, Shaw's 73%, uh, 25% cross accuracy for Williams, 21% for Shaw. And this is where I kind of, I know this probably sounds stupid because people are probably thinking, what, 25% cross accuracy, that is absolute rubbish. But what I'm thinking is, if Brandon Williams is similar to Luke Shaw and he's what? four, five, year, five years younger than him. I think this kid has got a lot of potential. And I think um, I think we were talking to Jay about this, that Jay was saying how there was never any expectation of Brandon Williams because nobody expected him to be playing over 40 games for United. I think that's what Jay was saying. And it's true in that he just came out of nowhere. And I think it would be a real shame if we didn't give him the chance that I think he deserves. Um, and I just think, like I say, him and Shaw, there are other stats where they're probably very diff like different and I'm sure people will be arguing in the comments that I'm talking rubbish. I don't really care. But I just think if they're kind of similar in certain ways, but Brandon Williams has had nowhere near as much experience than Shaw, then surely he is on the right track to becoming better than Shaw thing with Luke Shaw is it's a shame because I forget that he is still only like 25 I because he's been around for so long I'm thinking like he's pushing 30 or something <laughs> he's really not um it's a shame I feel sorry for him I feel sorry for the body shamers yeah that when took it too far with him I mean I saw him in the Trafford Centre and like he, he looked he looked all right I mean you, do you know what I mean it, but, he looked all right <laughs> Yeah, like, it, 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 uh, what I'm saying is that, like, people are going on, like, he was the same size as flipping Norbit's wife. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he, he really wasn't, do you know what I mean? It's just, pe people took it too far. Um, and I understand that he's a professional, he's got to be in shape and whatever, whatever. But I think people nitpicking and being nasty when they really don't know what's going on. They don't know what's yeah. going on behind closed doors. They don't know how hard he's working or he could have had something wrong with him. We don't know. And people, I think, were really quick to judge him there. And I, I think, th obviously, his injury as well. Yeah, that's the thing. I think most fans are worried that he may get injury, um, injured again. People keep saying that he's injury prone. So maybe that is why we do need a left back because in case Shaw does get injured again and maybe Williams moves to the right back because, you know, he, he's preferred right-footed. So maybe mm -hmm. that could work. I don't know if I could give up Juan Basaka though. No, I don't think we can give him up. I think it'd be more of a rotation between yeah. them two. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true, I guess. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, um, like we say, Regulon would be a great signing. Alex tells for me, a little bit, not that he's old at 27, but I'd prefer somebody maybe a little bit younger in keeping with um, the rest of the squad. Although there are people that are around 27 as well. But um, yeah, I mean, he has experienced, he's won trophies and stuff. And then obviously the guy from Dynamo Kiev that I mentioned before, for me, very exciting. Um, he is um, very experienced already for his age. He's playing for Ukraine. I don't think he played the other night though. Um, 
But for me, he's a little bit too similar to Brandon Williams in that why would you bring another young kid in when you've already got one young kid there yeah. anyway? So we'll have to see what happens, I guess. Uh, well, moving on to our third topic, and it is a bit Marmite, this subject. Yeah. It is our third kit. Um, I mean, I don't know what to make of it. If I'll let you start, Angelina. What do you think of it? You know what? When I first saw it, I was horrified. I was horrified. It was like, it was like a horror film. I was like, oh my God, who has chose this? What was the thought process behind this? Like, I need to bring the designers. I need to understand what is going on here because this is shameful. Then I saw City's third kit. I saw Spurs's, which looked like some random like yellow t-shirt that they'd just thrown on. Um, And I saw Chelsea's and I felt a bit better, I'll be honest. Maybe this is just a year of wacky third kits, I don't know. (laughs) But, um, yeah, that that for me did make me feel better. But, yeah, I was 100% horrified. And you know what? If you've got to get David Beckham in to plug your stuff, then you know it's it's getting tough. Do you know what I mean? I think the combo, horrific. The shorts, it's my issue is the shorts. Yeah, definitely. And like people that know me, I will wear bright colours. I will wear wacky stuff. Like I don't mind something that's a little bit in your face. But it was just the shorts as well. The actual top on its own. Now I've not seen like these, like I think the release, the leaked photos and stuff, it looked a little bit washed out. But now I've actually seen, well, I've not seen it in person, obviously, because I'm in Berlin. But um, now that I've seen photos of it on the site and stuff, I'm not that mad at it, I'll be honest. Mm. Do you know what? For me, when I first seen it, I was like, what is that? It looks like a chewed up sweet. Um, <laughs> you know, one of those black and white sweets. I'm not sure what they're called, oh, but it looked like one called? of them. Is it Humbugs? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Humbug. Yeah, Humbugs, yeah. Or, or, or something called Jack's jack chewy thing and yeah, it's black and yeah, white yeah. as well whatever they're yeah it reminded me of of a sweet and i thought do you know what no and then i seen the shorts i was like god no like who would even go and buy the shorts to go with the short uh, the shirt but then of course david beckham himself was modeling it and i thought oh wow like amazing he just can make anything look good and he they definitely made that ASAP. shirt look good they were like oh my god maybe we made a mistake what the hell's going on with these shots david david we need you to help us out like maybe they try you know they thought of like the sexiest adult. man in the world who do yeah. you call david beckham and he will make it all look good no yeah. problem but i think it's interesting how on the website i know it's like the the children's kits they're selling it with plain shorts are we have is are we meant to be wearing that with white shorts? Yeah, it's like the white shorts with the red stripes. Yeah. That's what well, I've I would seen. And I've, it. I've seen people that have purchased the set for the kids and stuff. And so my question is, are they? Is it more because especially with the marketing of it, it's been very kind of fashion as well as a yeah. kit. So it's like, are the shorts just more of like a wacky fashion choice? I don't know. I I don't think that they can't be playing in them shorts. I think, you know what, it would have looked a lot better if we had black shorts with it. Yeah. It just would have made it look a bit more smarter, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I was hoping that we were going to go for... I mean, I really liked the blue from... Not the season, just gone the season before. I actually liked Oh, the, that the one. 17, 18 one? No, the 18, 19 one. Oh, right, yeah. Um, But I was hoping that we were going to go for like a 2005 blue yeah like that that brighter blue or yeah. I thought are we gonna go with I mean one shirt that I always think of because I just think of um do you know I think of like Ronaldo in it and stuff is that white one from back in 2008 as well I was hoping we were going to go down a nostalgic route I thought they were going to go pink again as well but I think that was wishful thinking because my friend um has got a a baby and she wants to get her a United kit and she really wanted the pink one because Aww. she didn't want to dress her in the red one in case everyone thought she was a boy because her hair's not grown yet properly. So, so we were like pink, let it be pink, but no. Um I don't know, yeah, I'm I'm not I don't hate it as much I'm not horrified as much, but I also do question what people were thinking. 
maybe it's just one of those shirts that just grows on us and we just you end know up what? loving it. it. It could end up, it really could end up being that. It it really could. Who, who knows? Who knows? Like you say, by the end of the season, everyone could have them on. You just know, though, that people are going to be rocky. Like, you're going to have people probably like myself, but I am definitely not buying them shorts. It's stuck too far for me. That will have the full, like, they'll no. have the full kit. It wouldn't even surprise me if they released a flipping jacket in the same print as well, just oh, to, like, oh, no, push it no. even further. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean... Like say, we'll we'll have to wait and see. But yes, that is the end of our hot topics. Let us know in the comments what you think about if we should be having a striker, if you'd like Bale, um, if you think that we need a left back. Let us know what you think about the kit. Maybe what's your favourite third or, or away kit. So now it is time for the interview segment of our podcast. And we had a chat with sports writer and journalist Sam Pilger to see what he thought about some of the latest Sancho news, who else we should maybe be signing and all things United ahead of the new season. Hi Sam, thank you for joining me and Angelina. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh, Good, good. Um, We are joined by Angelina. I'll just let you say hi Angelina. Yes, hello. I'm here just in a different country. Um, the season is fast approaching and Manchester United fans on a whole are excited, but we are a little bit worried. Where do you think Manchester United will finish this season? And position wise, where do you think we will challenge most on the pitch? Um, I think uh, I, I can't see much uh, difference from last year. I can't see much of a progression. I mean, United finished third, I think, to finish first or second with the transfer business that has been done already would be a real achievement. I think if there are some more additions before the end of the window, there is an outside chance United could break into the top two with with, uh, dislodged Liverpool or City. But um, at the moment, I think to to stay in the top four um, would would, uh, probably be uh, a good season for United. Yeah. Um, I mean, in one of your recent articles, you mentioned Donny van der Beek. Beek, Beck, I get in trouble, however I pronounce it. But um, And obviously, he's a fantastic signing for Manchester United. Um, you mentioned how he's a versatile player, which is, is great. But at the same time, where do you think he will best fit in for United in the midfield? Well, I think I think that's a that's a good question. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, he seems to have been placated by speaking to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer about where his role would be, because of course his his uh, his best roles are currently occupied by Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba. So um, naturally, you know, if you're joining a club, you say, well, where do you see see me fitting in? I mean, but he was. He was reassured and excited by Solskjaer about where that is. Now, I wasn't a party to that conversation. I'd be interested to know. There is talk that Solskjaer wants to try and play all three of them. Um, How you manage that without a Matic or a Fred or more of a holding midfielder is interesting. Um, I think the most exciting thing is, is in a way that it wasn't, there there, there is these questions and he doesn't immediately walk into the side. Um, and that, that is what you know, United have needed, that strength in depth and um, players who are, are good enough to start in the 11 who, who will be on the bench. I mean, obviously Solskjaer didn't trust his bench towards the end of last season. With a player like Van der Beek, either in the starting 11 or on the bench, then his options start to, to look good. But um, he, he's an attacking player. I mean, he, he, I mean, obviously he won't be in that holding role. So he'll either look to play that Pogba role and sort of ghost in, because uh, Solskjaer wants more goals from, from midfield. That has, has been lacking, uh, you know, from Matic and, and, and Pogba. But, or, or the Fernandes number 10 role. But obviously it's hard to see Fernandes not starting. But the big difference here is obviously there's Champions League football. So there's not those early games where he can flood the team with inexperienced or squad players in the Europa League. You need a strong team. You know, you could be playing um, Juventus on on Wednesday and Chelsea away on Sunday. So there'll be plenty of big games for, for them to 
for, for them to all to be happy throughout the season, I think. Yeah, uh, definitely plenty of games to share. <laughs> uh, Van der Beek was obviously, well, Van der Beek, sorry, um, was obviously our first sign-in, but who was our initial link to first sign-in was Jack Grealish. Um, you mentioned him in your article as well. Lots of fans want him because they think he's a great player. Other fans are like, well, we have Bruno. We have that role already covered. We don't really need him. Do you think the Grealish boat has sailed? Um, I think it probably has, yes. I mean, United were certainly interested. I think a deal had been worked out in January, uh, possibly to bring him in in, in January uh, when uh, Villa stayed up, surprisingly. The whole deal changed then. I think United were hoping to pick him off for 30, 35 million if, if Villa got relegated and needed to raise funds. And then suddenly Villa were emboldened. I mean, they've just signed Ollie Watkins today for 33 million. They have more money. Their expectations changed. And they thought, well, no, we're not going to be taking advantage of. And I, I mean, you know, they were looking, I don't think a figure was ever put on it, but it certainly increased to something like 60, 80 million uh, pounds. So, you know, I've, I've made the point on Twitter in my articles that United have signed Fernandes and Van der Beek now for less than they were being quoted for James Madison, certainly with figures of 100 million and, and around the same price as of one Jack Greeley. So I think all United fans would take Van der Beek and Fernandes over one Madison or one on Grealish. But I think, yeah, the Van der Beek uh, signing has, has seen the end of uh, any uh, uh, Grealish interest. United were interested when I, when I spoke to United during the summer, not long ago. The question was asked, well, where would he, where would he play? Um, and this is a question, obviously, you asked about Van der Beek, but you're more comfortable about a, a £35 million player saying where would they play rather than a you know, a 60, 70, 80 million pound player clearly has to go straight into the side. Definitely. Um, I mean, you touched before on United's wider squad and the bench and how Oli was not confident. I don't think many of us were confident at times. Um, and you also mentioned this in um, your article a few weeks ago with Forbes. Um, are you still concerned? Um, and obviously there's still a lot of transfers and signing things being discussed. Who's top of your wish list for us to get before the transfer window ends? Um, well, well, you won't be surprised to hear that the name of, of course, Jaden Sancho. Um, I think that uh, I think from what I understand and, and speaking to people today, that that's far more likely to happen. Progress has been made. Uh, I know that's been reported by a few sources. I, I, I uh, have learned that today as well. That real progress has been made on his uh, on his 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 uh, wages, his personal deal, agent fees, um, which just leaves the, the the small matter of the the, the transfer fee with with Dortmund, um, which will be huge. And there's that's a huge obstacle. There's no guarantee that that will be um, uh, sorted out. Um, you know, Dortmund have said all along they want the 120 euro, million euros, which is about 108 million pounds. Um, United, obviously, in this pandemic era, don't want to pay so much money, want to pay less, want it to be structured, want there to be instalments. Um, so I think that, you know, the news is, is very positive with Sancho today, but... Um, you know, there's still a lot to do. There's enough time, though. It's, it's, uh, we're still in the first 10 days of September. It's October the 5th. I don't, uh, hopefully for United, it won't drag on for too long. But uh, yeah, I mean, Sancho was the player, the number one target. I think United are aware to finish the transfer window without him. There would be a backlash, which they'd expect, but it would also be a bit, bit of a PR nightmare, too, because they'd so clearly want him, need him. Um, and this is a unique summer where people are not spending money other than Chelsea. You know, next year, Barcelona, Real Madrid will have more money and more muscles to flex. So United really need to close the deal uh, this summer. Um, you just mentioned the breakthrough information today. How confident are you that this will happen? Please give us some good news yeah, because we need I can't some good take news. this saga anymore. <laughs> I know. Well, look, as I say, before today, there uh, it, it was 
treading water that we, we uh, they, you know, there were, I mean, it had been reported that his, his, weeks ago that his personal terms had all been agreed. That wasn't true. That has, has, has dragged on. The information I have today is that has now been sorted. So that, that, is, that is the good news. How likely is it to happen? You know, I can understand the frustration, but this is a, you know, we're talking a deal worth up to a hundred million pounds. You know, it's not a small deal. It, 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 it's huge. It's a huge amount of money. There's, there's pride as well. Dortmund don't want to uh, sell for less than they've said. United don't want to walk away from the deal. Uh, so there's egos involved there. But um, how likely is it to happen? A lot more likely after today, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee it. You know, this, you know, this is a lot of, a lot of money. And, um, uh, you know, there's two big clubs who are, who are fighting off each other, who want to come out of it. It, it's about agreeing a deal that United can think we weren't held to ransom in this pandemic era. And it's agreeing a deal that Dortmund could say we held out and we got a fantastic deal. Now, we've been here before in January, Sporting Lisbon and Bruno Fernandes. They both had a deal that they could be happy with, that they could justify to their fans. And this, this, is, this is similar to that. I mean, I've, I've got my fingers, toes, arms, <laughs> legs, everything um, crossed with that one. I really hope that transfer comes through. Um, last I, think the, I think the positive thing is uh, United want him. Yeah. Dortmund are willing sellers and he wants to come. He wants to come to United. Uh, it might have happened a year ago, but for United's failure to get into the Champions League, he, he looked at that and thought another year of Borussia Dortmund playing in the Champions League rather than, you know, slamming it in the Europa League. United getting to the Champions League was crucial to, to Sancho. Yeah. That happened. So, you know, there isn't really, who knows, somebody could hijack it at the last minute. I don't believe that's going to happen. Um, so all of the, all of the aspects are, are there, are coming together. So I would be positive, of course, no guarantee. Yes, definitely. Um, so, so last question, you did write a book on Manchester United's best 11. Are there any players from this current team? I'm, I'm not, I won't bring Sancho into it just in case. Um, are there any players from this current team that you reckon could maybe get a spot in, the, in your best 11? Oh, that's maybe a, in the future that have got future. potential. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. Um, off the top of my head, you know, possibly David de Gea. I mean, I think he's reached Schmeichel levels at times. I mean, Schmeichel was I picked as a goalkeeper for that. Um, you know, David de Gea is such a shame. He's only won one Premier League title with United. So I think I mean he's only 28, 29. There's years to go. De Gea could maybe dislodge uh, Schmeichel. Um, looking throughout the side. I mean, you know, obviously Rashford, Greenwood have a, most of their careers ahead of them. Um, but I have to say it's a high bar. We're talking, you know, United have had hundreds, thousands of, not hundreds and, of thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of footballers, yeah. uh, only 11 made it. And, and, and the players who didn't make it included um, uh, Paul Scholes, Brian Robson, Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a high bar. It's, it's a very high bar. I mean, I have to say, actually, Having the only player I'd say who didn't get into it, who probably would now, and I'd maybe regret, was, was Cristiano Ronaldo. He, uh, I wrote the book two, three years after he left, and I, my, my proviso was that they had to have enjoyed the, um, the, the peak of their career at Old Trafford. Yeah. And obviously, if you look back, you know, Ronaldo was at his best at Real Madrid, but I think if you want a Ballon d'Or, um, United, that, that's probably good enough. But, but then who would I dislodge? Because on the wings were Ryan Giggs and, and George Best. So, oh, know. no, you can't. You can't yeah. be doing them dirty. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, you just mentioned De Gea then. Do, what do you think about the amount of stick that he's getting? Because I personally am Team De Gea in that I think when you look back at the amount of times he saved that team when we were struggling and maybe... Mm -hmm not as good, um, you know, he was our best player. And to see people turn on him because of a few mistakes, I personally find it quite harsh. I was just wondering what your thoughts were. You know, I, I absolutely agree. I, I'm a huge uh, supporter of, of, of De Gea and uh, would not be writing him off. And Solskjaer stuck with him, you know, at, at a really... Um, difficult period, he stuck with him. And I think he'll be repaid. And I, and I think, you know, 
Um, Van der Sar played in a uh, uh, Champions League final for United when he was 40. Schmeichel played in Champions League final when he was 35. You know, De Gea is only 28 now. Uh, I think about to be 29. So, so if maths is correct, he <laughs> should be playing in a Champions League final when he's 30. Is that what you're trying that, to well, maybe I, say? Well, that would be, yeah, that would be in the next year or so, yeah. So I, I think, you know, goalkeepers don't reach their peak until early 30s, mid 30s. I think he's given so much to United and, you know, anybody who has been considered the best goalkeeper in the world at that age certainly still can. You know, it'll be interesting this season with, with, with Henderson coming back to Old Trafford clearly to apply some pressure. He's not a guy who wants to sit on the bench and that could be, you know, tactically a smart move to, to improve De Gea's performances. I'm sure Henderson will get some game time, um, but uh, yeah, I agree. I think, I think the best is yet to come with De Gea. Well, fingers crossed for a Champions League final with David De Gea in there. Um, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to chat to myself and Emma. It's been good to get your thoughts on everything. My pleasure. Good to speak to you guys. Well, that was great chatting to Sam. I am so glad that he is like us and Team De Gea. Because Definitely. If he would have started slugging De Gea, I, I would have got angry, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so it's time for our Q&A section now. So I will kick things off. So this question for you, Emma, is from Cass W. So one player from any United era to slot into this team, who and why? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to have to go with my absolute hero, my favourite player, Eric Cantona. Just because when he first signed for Manchester United, he made such a massive impact to the team. Um, he, he just changed it, didn't he? And I think if he came into our team now, he would make a massive impact. His character for a start, that aggression, that passion, it's just something that we haven't really got in our team right now. I like that bit of um, feistiness. We've seen a bit with it with Williams, but I'd like to see a bit more. So, yeah, definitely Eric Cantona for me. Yeah, good one. Um, I'd probably go similar unless I'd, me just being a big Ronaldo fan, I'd just want Ronaldo back. And <laughs> it would be simpler oh. times. <laughs> uh, this question is from Chris Powley. Can you honestly see us winning the league with Ollie or with Woodward, Woodward and Glazers for that matter? You know what, the Woodward Glazer talk, we could be here all night, we could get very irritated by it. Um, so taking them out of the equation, which is not easy to do, obviously, um, winning the league with Oli, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as much as I don't necessarily agree with owners or what goes on behind closed doors or Woodward at all, I believe in Manchester United, I believe in my club, my manager and my players, and I can 100% see us winning the league with Ollie. I mean, what, what's the point in sitting there and being negative and being like, oh no, we're never going to win it. What kind of, that attitude is not helping anybody. You need to put things out into the universe. So yeah, I think definitely I could see it happening. I think um, Liverpool and City stay at the top can only go on so long. I think you've seen it, you saw it um, a little bit last season, maybe more with City, but I think you will see it more this season. Um, hopefully with United, but especially I think with Chelsea um, and the signings they've made, that gap is going to start closing eventually. Uh, yeah. That Liverpool team are not forever young unless they're drinking from a fountain of youth that we don't know about. Um, people are going to, you know, start learning how to maybe play against them more. The players are, you know, going to age and stuff. So, you know, it's um, they're, they're not going to be that amazing forever and. Neither is that City team, especially since they're not getting messy now. Um, so, yeah, the gap will close and I think definitely we, we could win the league. Why not? Dream big. Well, the, th the thing is, I've always said it's not going to be done in one season. We're not going to yeah. get everyone that we want in one transfer window. Um, I've always said it's going to take a few seasons for Oli to be near um, to contending with Liverpool and City. If we get all the signings that we want, then I think, you know, within next season season or the season after maybe we could be titling for for the first place i can't i don't see why not mm. yeah definitely um okay so next question this is from 
Manav Sandhu. So, dream paddock podcast guests could be from the footballing world or just interesting people in general. Ooh, because you said dream paddock guests. Yeah. It has to only be one person, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. Can you imagine that the stories he has? Oh, I'd be stressed doing that interview, you know. Oh, I'd like be shaking. Tell me off. <laughs> feel like oh, if, if you just like like if you I don't know if you like sipped your water wrong or something it'd be like but he, he, like you'd be so excited to be in his presence but you'd be scared as well yeah but it'd, be good, it'd be good scared yeah definitely so I, I couldn't think of anyone better to have him Sir Alex Ferguson um on paddock can you imagine that though just, I know it'd just be amazing wouldn't it Guys, make it happen, please. We've, uh, <laughs> we've said it here first. Just let us know where the the time and place. We'll, we'll be there, no problem. Um, I think for me, um, I would probably go with um, David Beckham. Ooh, good Because one, yeah. I would just love to understand. Because, um, like, we've talked about it, like, the whole social media thing and how imagine if social media had been around when you know that era were you know massive um and i'd just like to talk to him about how things have changed because he was you know that golden boy at the time and what it's like for the golden boys of nowadays um yeah i think that'd be quite interesting and to maybe just get a bit of dirt and a bit of understanding on what went on whilst he was at united i think yeah definitely uh, next question is from Chris Kennedy. Top three best pizza toppings combination. Combinations. Okay. So I don't eat this, but just because it irritates the life out of everyone, ham and pineapple, because why no. not? Oh, Angelina, just, it, no. This is what I mean. It irritates people. No. I don't even know if I'd like it because I've never tried it. But I just <laughs> I just think it's it's so popular that is as in people hate it and love it it's it's good it's got to be good if it's about this much does not belong on a pizza <laughs> if i wanted it, fruit on something i would eat fruit not on my pizza for me it definitely has to be spicy beef and then i either with like some onions maybe a bit of sausage maybe some mushrooms you, you yeah you only said three but you know what i'm i'm a bit of a pig so i kind of like have like six toppings on my pizza yeah I mean, as well, I like a kind of like a chicken fajita kind of pizza with the chicken and the peppers and onions and everything. And I also, um, my more bougie pizza, I would say, would be mushrooms with um, people have that little bit of truffle oil on it as well. I feel like that's more like a bougie pizza or one with like a load of fancy cheeses on. Oh, you're making me really hungry now. Like I actually want a pizza now. (laughs) <laughs> I know, my order one. <laughs> uh, so that concludes our Q&A. So thank you for those. And keep an eye out because we will be posting more on the community tab for you to get your questions in for us. And our last bit of the show is our in defence section. And this week we have chosen Mason Greenwood. As you know, he has been in the news because he got sent home to England because he invited girls back to his hotel room um, and breaking the COVID-19 rules. Um, Angelina, do you want to kick this off? Um, Do you think it's been blown out of proportion or do you think he's just been a very silly boy? You know what? This is in defence, so I will defend him, but I need to just get my run out of the way. Um, I think... In normal circumstances, I think sneaking people back to your hotel, I'm sure it's done quite often. And like we say before, social media, I'm sure it was done very, very often. Um, so I guess that side of it, I'm not really mad at. I mean, at the end of the day, I think Phil Foden's got more uh, questions to answer, shall we say, because it's to my understanding, um, he has a long-term partner. Um I know from just from Greenwood's Instagram, I think he's, I'm assuming he's newly single. Um, yeah. Young lad, do what you want to do. Um, I do, you know what though, I do give him props because apparently he's been talking to this girl for a few weeks. Because at first I was thinking like, what, he's just like managed to find some random girl. Apparently he scoped her out 
and was already chatting to her for a week or two. So we put in some groundwork. So I'll give him that one. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but I think um, it, it's just the COVID situation. I just think, and I think it's the fact that um, it's, you know, these are kind of like young players in this England squad, players that we will want to see at the Euros, at the World Cup, at the World Cup after that, you know, these are going to be the players of the future. And I just think to see them make a silly mistake, it's frustrating. I think it is the whole COVID situation in that it's just, you know, if you want to do what you want to do, go and do what you want to do. But it's like, you're in Iceland, mate. Just calm it for a minute. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. are you like, why do you need to be entertaining people? Are you not tired? Like, you've been playing <laughs> football, you've been training. Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just... It's, I can understand why people are angry. Yeah. Um, but I also can understand that it is being blown out of proportion to an extent. I think, like I say, if it wasn't this COVID situation, I don't think it'd be as bad, but it's just stupid lads, isn't it? Yeah. Men are no. trash, no, I'm joking. Well, uh, I don't know, I, I could <laughs> argue that one. <laughs> but no, um, you know, it, it's, it's, people might say boys will be boys. It's not necessarily that, it's just, young lads and you have to understand you know what it's what it's like for them you know you're young you're teenage lads you've got the world at your feet they've probably got girls throwing themselves at them left right and center their egos are probably the size of Iceland um so you know the you, you can kind of see you know why things like this happen um I know that Gary Neville's come out and said that these lads need a little bit of tolerance and love and saying that like these lads aren't robots, which I do agree. These lads yeah. aren't robots. They are going to make mistakes. And he was saying, you know, think about lads when they're 18, 19, 20, they do silly things and they do make mistakes um, and they let themselves down. So I do, I'm do, not necessarily saying that they need tolerance and love and all that because they should be reprimanded like they have been. Um, but I understand what he means in that you have to put yourself in that position in that, I'm not a lad, but I'm sure, you know, if I asked my friends or my brother what they were doing when they were 18, 19, 20, I'm sure it was probably a lot worse. Yeah. Um, so I guess in that sense, in them being young lads, I'm not mad because yeah. people make mistakes. You know, no, I I echo everything you you've said there. You know, it's if coronavirus wasn't if yeah if coronavirus wasn't a thing right now, no one would bat an eyelid that they brought girls back to the hotel room it really wouldn't be a massive issue but because they've broken rules I think everyone's gone mad at that because you know they got sent home they couldn't play their match um so I do see why people was a bit angry a bit disappointed but the fact is that Mason Greenwood deactivated his Twitter account just shows like how much stick he probably thought he was going to get or the yeah. fact is that our, our fans sometimes are a bit fickle and they just go in on our it's players sad. yeah you know they they do go a bit hard on him and you do have to remember he is very young he made a silly mistake you know he wasn't thinking with his head um definitely I, not yeah I just think he got carried away with the situation he didn't you know coronavirus was far from his mind um, so I just think, you know, yes, they've been punished, but we don't have to go in on them now. Like, you know, mm. just, they're going to keep their head down. They're going to get on and work hard and, you yeah. know, prove everyone that it was just a mistake and they are sorry. And, you know, hopefully it won't happen again. Um, yeah, just just take it easy on them. There's no need for Greenwood mm. to think that he had to deactivate his social media account. Mm. You know, it's not nice. Not I, nice I for think that. as well it's messed up that those girls, whether they're saying that, oh, we didn't mean to share it, you're putting it on your close friends on Instagram, put, of course people are going to screenshot it. And this is where, you know, they need to be held responsible as well. And I know that Greenwood and Foden were fined. I hope these girls were fined as well, because at the end of the day, I called BS on, we didn't really know who they were, and we didn't really know that there was any restrictions and they was in bubbles and... Yeah, the, the really nice lads and, oh, it's so tight on them and we feel so bad. You put them in that situation at the end of the day, those girls should be taking more responsibility. I'd have more respect for them if they held their hands up and thought, you know what, and said, you know what, 
two footballers from England wanted to chill with us. We thought, why not? We had a bit of a laugh. I shouldn't have posted it online. I shouldn't have even done it. Take responsibility rather than all this rubbish I'm reading in the media. Yeah, I agree. I'm not saying people should be going after anybody at all, but I think they need, I hope they got fined as well. And I think they should definitely be taking some responsibility. But like you say, in a year's time, will people remember this? Probably not. Maybe someone makes a meme out of it. I don't know. Yeah. But (laughs) yeah, I mean, I think people just need to leave Greenwood alone. And I think, you know, it's a great season coming up for him. And I'm sure that he'll score in different ways that will make us all very happy. (laughs) Um, but yeah that's the end of our podcast this week obviously thank you to sam for joining us for the interview thank you to everybody for the questions on q a and thanks to everybody that has been listening or watching us um so yeah don't forget to like subscribe check out the other content on stretford paddock let us know in the comments what you think about all the topics that we have discussed emma where can everybody find you um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, That United Family, and you can also find me on Twitter, Emma Edgar underscore. Perfect. And like I always say, my name's Angelina Kelly. Find me if you want. Not really forced. Um, but yes, and obviously, thank you, Emma, for another podcast. And we will be back next week with some more United topics as the season is starting and we're very excited and we're going to have loads of things to talk about. So yes, thank you. And we will see you guys later.